the Mediterranean looks more inviting than ever. The drivers in the Cyprus Rally realise there's another day of sweat and toil to endure on the stages. The suffering is overall ready for championship leader Tommy Mackinnon, off down a ravine on day one. Out on stage two, crashed another bin, Harry Rotterra, his suspension buckling when he rammed a rock. The most dramatic exit from the rally was Peter Solberg's Subaru going up in a great ball of fire. This was all that was left of the half a million dollar race machine. Kenneth Eriksson was second on day one, but then it all went wrong for the Swede. A huge hole in the engine manifold bled the car dry of oil. The next start of fall was Didier Oriol. He just set a fastest stage time when his engine overheated and seized. François Delacour had ripped his gear lever right off on day one, but it was the engine that finally gave up on day two. It's going to be a fierce four-way battle on today, the final day. Just 24 seconds between the top four. Burns has the narrowest of leads from McRae, but still in with a chance, Grunholm and last year's winner, Sainz. Out of the driver's points, but on track to score in the Manufacturers' Championship, Skoda and Hyundai. Skoda's the only major team to field two and not three cars in Cyprus, but at least their full complement of cars is still running. Freddie Lloyd suffered for much of day two with drive shaft failure, so sixth is not a bad place to be. But the surprise of the top six is Japan's Toshi Arai, who's fifth. At the start of the rally, Carlos Sainz looked out of the running, but on day two, he made back over 40 seconds to end up four, with three cars in front to sweep the road clean. Carlos, you're perhaps in the best road position today, but you're going to have to push quite hard. I think, I think everybody's going to push very hard. So everything at the moment possible. Yes, we have to wait and see, be careful. A little bit with the punctures because we have to do four stages without service and that, that's going to be the most important thing as well. Grunholm had led at the end of day one, but his first car on the road, he was the one slowed by the thick gravel. Do you think you're going to have an advantage running third with the cleaning ahead? A bit, yes, from, uh, for, to, to, to Richard, yes. But then we have Carlos just behind us also. So. Ah, it's quite close. It's going to be a very exciting day. Yes, I think so. Until the last stage, I think it will be a hard fight. McRae deliberately dropped back to second at the end of day two, so he wouldn't have to run first. Normally the last days is pretty straightforward, but I think this is going to be quite a tough one. So it just flat out? Yeah, no, there's uh, no tactics today. The only one is flat out. First is not always best, lumped with the lead. Burns knew that the chances of keeping it by the finish would be very slim. I think, well, any any one of the three behind me, um, all of them all of them are going fast enough to, uh, to be able to win, but so am I, so... <laughs> so the final day of the Cyprus Rally and all to play for. This is the battlefield, 97 kilometers in total, four stages, each run twice. A sting in the tail of an already painful event. The longest stage of the day, Vavatsina. This would be the stage where Burns would find out how much of a handicap it was going to be running first on the road. side to side. Under the wheels there's so much dirt that the tyres come close to aquaplaning. Inside the car, Burns balances it as finely as he can, walking the tightrope between on and off the road. His time through Vavatsina, 17.21 seconds. Next up to the line, Colin McRae. And already...
already you can see how much Burns has cleaned away much of the dirt. The trick now is for McRae to follow Burns' wheel tracks for maximum grip. Again in the car, a sense of control, calm, and amazingly, with the wheel flicking this way and that, and a gear change every few seconds, McRae is driving without gloves. McRae's time is a second faster. Burns still leads. But now the real cleaning starts. First to feel the benefit, Marcus Grunholm. Determined to keep sights at bay and keep his title hopes alive, he set fast his time, but feared for the durability of his tyres. Fourth on the road, Carl Sights in the Ford Focus. Right on the clean line, Sykes was second fastest, but overall, still no change. Just waiting for one of the guys up front to make a mistake, Toshi Arai, fourth in his Subaru. When Arai lost some time on stage 15, missing an opportunity to catch the Japanese was Freddie Lights in the Mitsubishi. Spinning it in the middle of the stage. Alistair McRae's rally came alive on stage 15. He was fifth quickest, which meant he moved ahead of Bruno Thierry into eighth. With not a moment to take a breath, the drivers were straight into stage 16, Macaras. 13 kilometers long, very fast, and by Cypriot standards, very wide. Burns had been able to hold off McRae on the previous stage. Now he was quietly confident of being able to do the same again on stage 16. But once Burns was into Macaras, he was clearly having trouble getting grip uphill on the gravel. As he rounds the corner, a wall of dust and gravel flies up. Bad news for Burns, but good news for the cars behind. later and McRae was on the stage again without gloves he gripped the wheel for all it was worth in Cyprus because of the slow average speeds the co-drivers read the notes slower than anywhere else outside McRae was visibly quicker than Burns and the clock confirmed it the Scot setting a time almost eight seconds faster and with it earning the lead Grunholm had been fastest on stage 15, but on stage 16, he couldn't match the pace of the cars on Pirelli's. Instead of hoping for the lead, Grunholm now had to start worrying about keeping third. second fastest through Macaras. The Spaniard was now just seven seconds behind Grunholm, and not only after third, but maybe second or first as well. So McRae back in front, but Burns is not out of the picture yet, and neither are Grunholm or Sainz. The last two stages of the morning were two short ones, nine kilometers and seven kilometers, but still the drivers changed over tires to minimize wear. On the first two stages, Sainz had moved to within striking distance of Grunholm. 
with temperatures nudging 40 degrees, not surprisingly, there were many spectators by the roadside. But they were missing a thriller. Could Burns limit the damage being done by McRae? Not if the clock had its say. On stage 17, McRae doubled his lead to 14 seconds. But if the speed was impressive inside the car, there right, was a need for more. McRae asked Chris to speak faster. Six over crest. And six left. Arrows through for keeping. Faster. Okay. Into six right over crest. 30. For Grunholm, too, the clock was no friend. His tyres were begging for mercy. And after stage 17, third place was only his by just a second. Then on stage 18, by just half a second, this was torture to watch and torture to bear for the Finn. Seitsemän. Oikee pitkä eri. Ja nyppy oikee eri ouheen. The man inflicting the pain on the reigning champion, Carlos Sykes, rock hopping wildly on an event he loves. Toshi Arai was having problems with his water injectors. Whatever that meant, he was losing power and his grip on fifth. Making the most of the Japanese's misfortune, Freddie Loikes, 43 seconds down after stage 17, and then just 24 seconds down after stage 18. With all this action up front, Patty Hagstrom hoped that one of the works drivers would trip up and hand him a point. There was yet another fight lower down the order, this time for a Bruno Thierry was slowly needling away at Alistair McRae's place. McCray was hampered by more tyre problems on the Hyundai. Tenth in the second Skoda, Armin Schwartz. He had problems with his transmission. McCray might have been leading, but he knew the gap could have been bigger. Yeah, yeah. Inside the car, not all was happy. Absolute rubbish stage. Is that a thing? Uh, 4.39. There's, uh, there's a couple of notes here that are not brilliant. There's, there's crest and distances are wrong. McRae lost four seconds of his lead to Burns. Suddenly the fight was on again. So confirmation of the score after the first run through today's first set of four stages. Burns is 10.6 seconds behind McRae. The road section after stage 18, parked by the Verge car number one. Peugeot's bad luck had struck again. We have it maxi C now, and uh, the, the fuel is not coming out of the tank. I With the help the, of their the engineers, Grunholm and Timo Rautiainen and, uh, tried to fix the problem, a lack to, of fuel pressure. Suck the fuel out of the pump tank. The rally and their title hopes depended on a quick fix. It's open now. And but Grunholm's face told the story. What can we do? 
his rally and probably his championship were over. Mm. Incredible. The news is bad. He had to retire due to the fact that uh, uh, pressure, um, or even uh, gas pressure problem uh, stopped him on the route after the fourth stage of today. Back in Limassol, an air of relaxation, even amongst all that pressure. Has to be done like this, isn't it? Look at that. How hard have you been pushing this morning? It's quite hard, but it's surprising. It's it's a very strange rally because the harder you go, the slower you get. So you, it's a very fine line, and it's 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 really pushing it as hard as you can, but keeping on that clean, uh, gravel-free line. It's uh, it's quite difficult, but certainly for the middle two stages today, we got it right. You're a man for the pressure occasions. Do you think you can go all the way? It looks like it. It looks good at the moment. Um, we'll see. You know, the road's going to be a bit cleaner next time for everyone, but it, it looks good. Richard, a win on stage 18, but a less than ideal morning for you. Yeah, well, when you when you don't have as much grip as the cars behind you, there's there's really nothing I can do. I'm driving absolutely as hard as I can. My my lines have been pretty much perfect and uh, I don't know, there's nothing else I can do. Running the same stages again this afternoon, do you think you can pull back some more time? <laughs> I can only keep trying and, and see if uh, that's the case. Uh, at the moment it looks uh, it's going to be difficult but anyhow it's still four stages to go. Today is not so good because the first section I have some problem still overheating. And the last one I'm overshooting some junction, 20 seconds or something lost. You're about 24 seconds down on Toshi now. Do you think you can catch him over the last four? I don't know. It will be it will be quite rough uh, the second time and uh, we have to watch out a, bit, a little bit with our tyres because uh, I was quite on the limit uh, on, the, on the third stage. Cena was a very different stage, second time through, clean and smooth, it suited everyone. Burns hoped that the level playing field would now give him the edge he'd been looking for. But Ford had a secret weapon, with a team member telling them the gap to Burns. McLean knew he was on course to extend his lead. But extend it by eight seconds, that was more than even the Scott had hoped for. His time, by the way, was 17 seconds faster than the first time through. Ford scored first and second on stage 19. Seitz was after Burns' second place. The gap now just 9.5 seconds. The flag of England flying over the Cypriot Hills. Burns knew that if he was going to recatch McRae, it would have to be on stages 20 and 21. Burns acknowledged the wishes of his fans, but he had two punches on the previous stages, and by now he was worried about not being able to finish the rally at all. 10, medium right in, 20, medium right low, 20, K right right, the slow K left, tightens, to K right, and K right loose, 40, easy left over crest. McRae and Gris, though, oozed confidence neatly. They picked their way up the fast McCarris mountain, re-establishing their dominance. The gap now, 18 seconds. Carlos Sainz edged to within seven seconds of Burns after stage. Stick with 
third and be happy to sit a point behind Tommy Mackinnon at the top of the driver's table. With Loitz pinning him to the wall, Toshi Arai dug deep and set fourth fastest time on stage 20. It was enough to earn him fourth place. Without his differential problem on day two, fourth would have been Freddy Leutz's, but the Belgian was not unhappy with fifth. Finland keeps producing new rally stars, and Passy Hagstrom is one of them. He picked up the last driver's point for sixth. Thierry didn't quite manage to catch Alistair McRae and take seventh, but Skoda were the only works team to get all their cars home. Seven kilometres remaining and almost 20 seconds to make up. Burns had more than a mountain to climb if he was to stop McRae, beating him for a second time in two rallies. Max, 200. Slate at crest at 50. Left max, the Razor sharp, crest, the but easy. Max, Burns pushed 50. as hard as he did. Crest of right max, breaking 50, flat right, long 70. Time-wise, the pressure was off McRae, but this is Cyprus, and already some of the world's top drivers have fallen foul of the rough roads. Carlos Sainz pushed hard oh, on the look. last stage, but not to the point of throwing it all away. He opted for third. Over the moon to be fourth, Toshi Arai, a masterful drive from the British-based Japanese man. He pushed hard, but it wasn't quite hard enough. Freddie Loix took fifth. Seventh right after right a rally in which everything to seemed to go wrong. Uh, Alistair McRae in the Hyundai. Into left, 30. But back in Limassol, all ears were to the radio. But at the last minute, Burns decided to throw caution to the wind, setting a lightning fast time. There's any way of catching McRae, he wanted it. Also, he wanted medium to keep left. sights at bay. To medium left, minus long. To medium left. 100. Beat that car. But the okay. second McRae came through, it was clear anyway, well that done. time was his. Well he was fast well enough done. to win. Oh, yeah! For the second rally in a row, and for the 22nd time in his career, McRae was the winner. Colin, you've just won the toughest rally of the year so far. Yeah, I think uh, that's fair to say the toughest. It's probably this rally and Safari would be the other tough one. So it's, uh, it's a great, great feeling and great points for the championship as well. How hard were you pushing today? As hard as possible. Uh, we had to do because Richard was going to do the same. But I thought he would have. It would have been a bit closer. Uh, it's never easy, but it wasn't quite as hard as I thought it was going to be. You have to park there. Yeah, uh, we knew obviously he'd have a bit of an advantage today, running uh, running with slightly cleaner roads. But uh, he managed to do probably better on some of the stages than, than we expected, and we also did better than we expected on a couple. So you know, swings and roundabouts. I was pushing quite hard, but uh, well, half a puncher in the first one, another puncher in the second one. So I was afraid of finish, not finish the rally. But the battles in Cyprus were up and down the leaderboard. So a repeat of the result in Argentina three weeks ago, and the first time in living memory that two Britons finished first and second on two consecutive rallies. Just out of the points, McRae, Bruno Thierry and Armin Schwartz. 
to the Drivers' Championship. Mackinnon still leads, but only just from sight. McRae up to third and Burns to fourth. In the manufacturers, four three points ahead of Mitsubishi, then Subaru. Three weeks ago, McRae had no points. Now he has 20, and he's a favourite for the title. In 10 days, it's the Acropolis Rally. Can McRae make it three from three? You won't know if you don't join us from Greece.